Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's short video, we will be discussing about interfaces in Go. So I have some theory written about interfaces on my screen. We'll read through it and then we'll actually see an example of interfaces in Go. So an interface type, uh, interfaces are a type in Go, point to note, is defined as a set of method signatures. So an interface is simply just a set or a collection of method signatures. A value of interface type can hold any value that implements those methods. Now, since a uh, interface is a type, we could definitely define values of an interface type. And what can that value be? Well, it can be any value that implements all of the methods defined in the interface. All right. A type implements an interface by implementing its method. So in Go, interfaces can be implemented on any types on which methods could be defined. So most commonly, that would be structs. But that is not always the case. So for a type to implement an interface, uh, we simply have to implement the methods defined in the interface. There is no explicit declaration of intent, means there is no implements keyword in Go. So what are we stating here exactly? We are saying that if a certain type implements all of the methods that are defined by an interface, then that type is said to be implementing that interface, but we do not explicitly implement an interface in Go using the implements keyword. Well, now that's something very new, right? Let's learn more about it by following some examples. So stay with me as I will be pasting a lot of code into the editor for this one. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is define a struct called circle, which has a field uh, which is radius of type float 64. And on the struct circle, we have defined two methods. Uh, one is area, which calculates the area of the circle. And the other one is perim, which calculates the perimeter of the circle. And uh, for this, we would need to also import the math package. So let's quickly import the math package. Let's try to run this and uh, should definitely run correctly. And yes, it does. Um, next thing uh, we'll do is define another struct, which will be called rect. Uh, that's the short for rectangle, if you couldn't guess it, uh, which will have two fields, which are width, uh, length and width of type float64. And we have the same two methods, area and perim, implemented on the type rect. All right, so I hope this much of code is clear to everyone. And the next thing I'll do is within the main function, I will create a variable of type circles and one of type rect. And then I'm simply printing the value and type of these two variables. When I try to run this program, we see that our output is as expected. Uh, C is of type main.circle and here's the value and R is of type main.rect and here is the value. Let us now suppose that I wish to have a function which measures or prints the area as well as the perimeter of a circle. Let's call it measure circle. And let us in fact have a similar function for rectangle as well. Now in the main method, I will simply call this function uh, measure circle C and then I will call this function measure rect and there you go. And let's see what is the output we'll get if we run this. And yes, we first uh, get the circle printed, then we get its area and perimeter and then we get the rectangle printed and then we get its area and perimeter. At this point of time, we can definitely see the similarity between rect as well as circle. Uh, on both of these types, we can calculate the area as well as perimeter. But down below, we see that if we need to measure both of these shapes, then uh, we need to write different functions for, uh, you know, exactly doing the same thing. So here we are calculating area and perimeter for circle. And here we are doing it for rectangle. So what we could do in this case is, you know, define a generic type on which both area and perimeter functions can be called. 
So for that, let me define an interface. Let me call it uh, type shape interface and it will have two methods. One would be area, which returns a float 64 and another one will be perim, which also returns a float 64. And do you know what the best thing about uh, this interface is? Uh, th that is that both rect and circle are now implementing the shape interface even without the implements keyword because both the type rect as well as circle are, are implementing the methods defined within the shape interface. And this is goes implicit interface implementation. Now let's go about and try to use the newly defined shape interface in our code. So instead of circle, we'll just use the type shape here and shape here as well. If I try to run this program, well, we see that we get a similar output. Next, I will be getting rid of the measure right function and I will rename this function into measure. And down below, I will be simply calling the measure function on both C as well as R. Along with this, let me comment it out as well. And when I try to run the program, yes, I see that I have a similar output from the measure function as we had before from measure circle as well as measure right. So what this is showing us is that we can store a variable which is of type circle into a variable which is of type shape and we can also store a variable of type rectangle into a variable of type shape. In terms of object oriented programming, you can say that circle is a shape and rectangle is a shape. Alright, let's try something here now. Uh, what if I got rid of the perim method from rectangle when I try to run this program? Okay, you see that it gives me an error. Uh, it does not complain when I try to measure uh, the circle. But when I try to measure the rectangle, we see that we cannot use R, which is of type rect, as type shape in argument to measure. Rect does not implement shape. And, and here it also tells us that the method which is missing is the param method. Okay, uh, I'll reinstate this. And what if I get rid of both of these this time? Alright, so it tells us that it's missing the area method uh, and doesn't complain about the parent method now. Anyways, let's reinstate that and run this and we'll be back in our pristine state. But what this example uh, just showed us is that we cannot have a partial implementation of an interface. So if rect wishes to implement the shape interface, it has to implement both the area as well as the param method. This implementing one of those will not make rect a shape or will not implement the shape interface for rect. At this point of time, I'll get rid of the measure function and these two function calls and let's try to discuss some more points about interfaces. All right, so let us suppose I have a variable of type shape and this shape uh, internally is a circle and it has a radius of one. In the next line, I'm just simply trying to print the value and type of S. And we see uh, that here's the value of S and here is its type. It is main dot circle. Now, um, now suppose I want to access the radius of the circle. Could I simply do S dot R? Is R the variable name? Okay, it's radius. So could I simply do S dot radius here as well as S dot radius here? Uh, let's try to run this and we see that we get an error s dot radius is undefined type shape has no field or method radius so the message is pretty loud and clear here since s is a variable of type shape and shape does not define a variable radius or a field radius within itself therefore uh, when we try to say s dot radius we get an error so uh, what we could do in this case is that we could convert the shape S into a circle. For doing that, I simply have to say um, C colon equal to S dot. And then I have to give the name of the type to which I want to convert S to. So let me call it circle. 
in the next line i will try to print the value of c dot radius and before that i will actually also print the value of c as well so let's change this to c let's run this all right we get an error because uh, you know this thing really doesn't make any sense so when i try to run this again well what do i see now we see that c is of type mean dot circle and we can access the radius within c as well so that's the way we could convert values from concrete types to interfaces and from interfaces to concrete types as well now suppose instead of a circle i try to convert s to a rectangle so what would happen now let us suppose instead of a circle I try to convert S into a rectangle. So what would happen in that case? So well, uh, what do we see here? We see that our application has panicked. Interface conversion main dot shape is main dot circle, not main dot rect. So um, in simpler terms, it, it's just saying that shape is a circle and it's not a rectangle. And therefore, we cannot convert S into a variable of type rectangle. And therefore, we cannot convert s into a rectangle although we were being able to convert it into a circle but now many a times as a programmer i might need to convert an interface into a concrete type right and there is no way for me to know beforehand what is the actual concrete type represented by an interface so uh, let's see how we can handle this panicking situation in such a case for that, we are going to use a familiar construct in Go, which is the comma OK syntax. We could simply say uh, C comma OK colon is equal to S dot rect. So if this type conversion succeeds, then everything is OK and C will contain a variable which is of type rectangle and OK will have the value of true. And if the conversion does not succeed, then the OK variable will having a value of false. Uh, after that, I'll simply introduce a if else statement. So if everything is OK, then we print the value and type of uh, sorry, it should be C in this case. And if everything is not OK, we simply say that we cannot make this conversion happen. So when I try to run this and we see that in this case, we are not able to perform the type conversion because S is actually a circle and not a rect. And what happens if we try to convert S into a circle and I go ahead and run this. Well, we see that the value and type of the variable C gets printed out here. And this will help our programs to not fail if we are making the wrong type of conversion. The last point we will discuss about interfaces are composite interfaces. So in Go, you can compose interfaces of other interfaces as well. Let us try to see an example. What we are going to do is we are going to split the shape interface into two interfaces, shape one and shape two, and then we will see how shape can be composed of shape one and shape two. So for that, I will simply go ahead and copy this here and here. Let's call this one shape one and let's call this one shape two. Uh, with shape one, we only get area, whereas with shape two, we only get parameter but within shape we could have both shape 1 as well as shape 2 and that is how easy simple and straightforward it is to compose interfaces when I try to run this well this program just ran the way that it did before as well uh, I'm going to simplify it a bit uh, let's uh, simply uh, print the name and type of S and run it again. And uh, it'll work pretty normally. We see that the type is main dot circle. Okay, but what happens when I say um, remove the param function from circle this time? And I try to run this. Well, we uh, have seen this error before. We cannot use circle literal as type shape in assignment because it is missing the param method. Uh, but what about we simply use shape one instead of shape and run this 
and yes we don't see any errors because circle is fulfilling all the requirements expected in the shape one interface which is defining the area method which in fact also shows us that shape requires us to implement both the area as well as the pere method because shape is composed of the interfaces shape 1 and shape 2. And that's all we are going to discuss about interfaces in this video guys. Uh, all of the code that we just saw has been updated in this github repository aedorado slash learninggo interface.go. So please do check it out as well. Uh, some more concepts have to be discussed regarding interfaces and I will discuss them in another video because I wanted to keep because I didn't want to make this one way too long. So if you like the content of the video, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please do hit subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon in a brand new video.